VApp leasing is a cool feature to keep control of your costs and resources. With VApp leases, we can automatically power down and even delete a VApp after a certain amount of time. This is great for VApps that only need to run during the week, or software demos that are disposable. VApp lease settings are located in the general properties of our VApp. To get there, we can right click on a VApp, click on properties, and under the general tab, you'll notice the leases section. There are two types of VApp leases. The first is a runtime lease, or how long is this VApp allowed to run? The second is the storage lease. The storage lease says how long is this VApp allowed to you consume storage after it's powered off. To enable leases, simply click the Reset Leases checkbox, and then we can select the drop downs for how long we want our leases to be. So for the runtime lease, we can click the drop down box and select any number of pre configured times. This is also a combo box, which means I can type in any number here. So for instance, if we wanted a two hour runtime lease, we can simply just type in the number two. We can select the drop down box for if it is hours or days. And now next time we power on this V app, it will be allowed to run for two hours before it is powered off. Storage leases take effect when the V app is stopped. So after this V app has run for two hours, the storage lease timer starts. So if this was a V app that was maybe a software demo and we wanted it deleted after it was run, we can select the drop down and select one hour. So after we power this V app on, it will exist for two hours running, it will then power off and exist for another hour on storage. If you remember from our organization settings, we also have the ability to control what happens after the storage lease expires. Let's go back and check that out again. We'll cancel out of this and click Home, Org Settings, and then Policies. You can see that upon the end of a storage lease, the storage cleanup action is set to Move to Expired Items. If we click the drop down, you can see we also have the option to permanently delete. The last thing I'll mention with VApp leases is that a runtime lease is great for running a VApp for a certain period of time and then powering it off to save cost. So let's go back to My Cloud, right click on our Windows VApp, click Properties, set our lease time to the end of the week. To do this, we need to know the number of hours or days until the end of the week, or the time we want it to power off. In my case, it's about three days. If this VApp was powered on, we would see an expires message with a date and time that the VApp will expires. Let's go ahead and turn on the VApp so we can see this. We'll click OK. Allow the VApp to update. And then we'll click on the VApp and click the start button. Now that the VApp is running, we'll come back to our properties by right clicking and click properties. And you can see the expires on message here with an exact date and time that the VApp will shut off. We can tweak this by clicking the reset leases button, changing it to hours, and then modifying the number. So you can see that we can control the exact date and hour that our VApp powers off. VApp templates are a powerful tool in vCloud Director. They exist in our vCloud Director catalog and are used for deploying fully configured VApps, which could include multiple virtual machines, network configuration, and even network features such as firewall rules. So let's create a VApp template from our Windows One VApp. To begin, we have to first power off the VApp. If we right click on this, you can see the Add to Catalog is grayed out. It's important to note that this is really a web UI limitation. The vCloud API and the tools using the vCloud API have the ability to clone VApps and create VApp templates without powering off the VApp. So we'll start by powering this VApp off by clicking the Stop button. We'll confirm. And once it's stopped, we'll right click, click Add to Catalog, and we'll start by calling our VApp template name Windows One Template. 
we can put in a template description, select a virtual data center. In this case, we only have one virtual data center. If we have multiple catalogs, we can select a catalog to put the vApp template in. We can set a storage lease for this particular vApp template. And then the last option is the choice between making an identical copy or customizing VM settings. When we make an identical copy, all of the virtual machine names, the SID, and IP addresses will stay exactly the same. This option is great if you have all of the virtual machines isolated on its own vApp network. I use this when doing software development and I want to keep the exact same configuration for each build that I have. Again, I have a private vApp network that's isolated from the rest of my organization with a vShield Edge. And the second option is customize VM settings. This goes through a guest customization process to create a new name for the machine, a new IP address, and the machine SID. So we'll go ahead and click OK to add this to our catalog. And you can see during the template creation, we can't do anything else with this particular vApp. If we try to click and power on, we're unable to do so. And if we try and modify it in any way, you can see that everything is unavailable. You can see that our vApp shows a spiral busy graphic. If we come to catalogs, private, you can see the progress meter for the copy operation. So our vApp template is ready. If we right click on it, we can deploy a vApp from this template to our catalog. And we can also download it from our catalog in open virtualization format or OVF. From there, we can do things like import it into vSphere or other virtualization technologies. In addition, if we have a vApp template that we would like to upload, we can use the catalog upload tool to do the same. We can simply browse for our OVF, put in a name, and then upload it to our catalog. 